-hmm. So I've missed most of this quarter so far, but we seem to come around to a familiar theme that we dealt with last quarter, worship. That was one of the themes that um, kind of jumped out at me going over this. And we're going to start with the memory text this morning. It's from Mark 7, verse 15. There is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. A lot of people use that verse to defend yeah. what they eat. <laughs> they can eat anything that crawls across their plate. Yeah, <laughs> and that just falls into misunderstanding and misinterpretation of what the text says, yeah. which again, uh, dealing with worship is a common issue that comes up again and again, because one thing said in the New Testament doesn't by default make what's said in the Old Testament null and void without proper context or explanation. It's not that simple. And when you take it that way, you run into those issues of not knowing what you're talking about. And that's why we come back again and again to the realization, at least in study groups that I've been in, that you need the entirety of the Bible to make sense of what God is trying to say. Line by line. Yeah. Precept. Precept. And if you don't have that, you're not going to understand. And so you're in trouble. And that, that includes the whole Bible, not just yeah. parts a part here and a part there and make your whole belief system on just two or three things. Yeah. You get into trouble when you yeah. fact, go down that. Line um, by line. He says you should not just a part there, but rather here a little, here a little, little there a little. There a little. And it, when, when, when God puts, repeats things in, 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 the, in the scriptures, I mean, what is, what is the one word that you see often in the Bible? Remember. Why? It's because there's something in particular that he wants to point our minds yeah. to. So when, when you find something that's repeated in the scriptures, when he says, here little, there little, come on. Yeah. He didn't just stop there. He says, here little, there little. That means God is putting emphasis on the importance on, of the scriptures yeah. as, a, as an yeah. entirety, not yeah. just make a small portion of it uh, and, and make your, your religion out of it. Mm -hmm. Because what, what, what we're seeing today is people, uh, there's, a, there's some religions uh, playing with snakes. Why? Yeah. Because they took one part here a little. Right. And adopted Didn't go there. Whole, no. the whole concept. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. They forgot the there a little. Yeah. Comparing yeah. spiritual with spiritual. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So opening up to Mark chapter 7. And this got me thinking a little bit, and I might be off track slightly, but the thought did enter, enter my head. Um, trying to understand the reasoning why the Pharisees were testing Jesus, at least my interpretation of what's going on here in part. So let's 
start with verse 1. And the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together to him, having come from Jerusalem. Now when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is, unwashed hands, they found fault. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands in a specific way, holding the tradition of the elders. When they came from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other things which they have received and hold, like the watching cups, pitchers, cup of vegetables, couches. And then the Pharisees and scribes asked, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said to them, Well, did the prophet Isaiah tell you hypocrites that it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, the washing of pitchers and cups, and many other such things you do. He said to them, All too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother. And he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift of God, then you no longer let him do anything for the father or the mother, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down, and many such things you do. We think about it. Were the Pharisees wrong? Can you say that the Pharisees were wrong? Wasn't that wasn't that custom handed to them down by by, by the living God, by Christ no, Himself? No, they're, the things that are t- being talked about here yeah. are are from it's, a, a Talmudic okay. uh, so law. I understand that. Yeah, but the Talmudic That's law. Not, that, not, that, it's that, not the cleanliness. Yeah. It was yeah. the ritual. That they yeah. were after. And, 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 and that's what I, that's what yeah. I want to expand on. Like, yeah, they're Talmudic, but it, it's a ritual that's wrong. But but uh, the the precept it was correct because it was given to them by Christ Himself when at the Exodus. Those, those are Levitical laws uh, that governs the the that that that, that governs the think, conduct I of. I don't know. Of, I think of the Levites when they were inside. This was not Levitical law. That, that he's talking about here. I, I know, I know, yeah. but uh, but uh, I, I understand that, 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 that. But the Talmudic law that that that, uh, that the Pharisees, the hypocrites, were were, were over expounding on was something that yeah was 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 uh, was, was 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 beneficial for them. For uh, for example, today, wouldn't the washing of the hands be beneficial for us during during COVID? Yeah, but th- this perspective from. That the Pharisees took, I don't think was about cleanliness. It no, was. No, it wasn't. You have the Ellen White ceremonial says it's not about cleanliness. and the spirit of the law. You got the letter yeah. and the spirit of the law. Mm-hmm. This was the letter of the law. It was a ritual. It was a ritual that had gone far afield of what God had given them in the laws of cleanliness. And this was no longer about cleanliness, it was strictly about their law. And this is why Jesus says, In vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of man. Man. Nothing that they were doing there was of God. It was of man only. The way in which they were doing it. The precept I want to expound on was what Isaiah said. Well, did these people uh, 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 basically expound uh, expound on, on what they took out and added to and, and, and that's basically what what, 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 what what's happening today. People, um, people are adding to God, the, to the loss of God, what they want. They, they pick and choose what they want, rather than they a they're not here a little, there a little, here a little, yeah. there a little. That's why, that's how we, we get into what, what I'm asking this is because right now there's, there's debates. We can know things amongst ourselves, but... Uh, what is our job today? To go out and finish the work, right? We have to know how to answer to those people. 
but yeah, we and we need to know what the truth is before we can go out and and preach it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, this whole yeah. idea about that they couldn't even carry a handkerchief on on the Sabbath that was part of Talmudic law. Yeah, that had nothing to do with God's law at all. It's true, but but what I'm what I'm also uh, looking at is not a, not a lot of that stuff was mentioned. The Talmudic law it was not brought up. You know, in, in, in John it says uh, if if, if uh, everything was written about the life of Christ, not even the whole world can contain it. So yeah, it, it, the book of Mark did not expound on it enough, but that's why I want to bring it out a little bit. <laughs> There's one thing I want to I want to go back to verse nine. All too well you reject the commandment of God yeah. that you may keep your tradition. Yeah. I came up with this idea. Re reading this last night, I don't know where where I'm at with this, but I'll I'll submit it here. You say nine? Yeah. I had the idea of what they're doing here Good is they're in a way taking God for granted in in this. They're doing this because they've always done it. So the meaning of what they're doing is somewhat lost because they're doing it as a habit. God is no longer in the middle of what they're doing. They're doing it because it's a ritual. According to their say so, yeah. not God's. Right. Now, at this point, was Christ accusing them of his upcoming murder? No, he was no. not yet. Or, or it has not yet. Because that's one of the things that Christ is accusing them of. Well, this was already done back in the Old Testament days is where they started getting that ritual from because David took his many to be part of the showbread. Yeah, but in the Old Testament, this had a specific purpose for a specific group of people. It wasn't for the entire nation. It wasn't for like everybody. And, and, the, and the lesson brings that out. We would um, get it, in other words, because we're all Gentiles. The, these tra these traditions had been perverted, in a, in a sense, um, and it it had become just ridiculous. What she's referring to yeah. was uh, when David went and I got the uh, yeah uh, and, and ate the shortbread and shortbread. Um, Which just was, show, uh, yeah, and that's that's a violation of the tradition violation. as they that, held that it. That show God's mercy. Yeah, but that's, that's, uh, there, there's times when God just struck people dead, mm -hmm. right? But right. well, yeah. why why didn't why was David and his men were not struck dead? It's because yeah. there's that's God's mercy. What were they doing? Yeah. They were hungering for what? For food, and yeah. that is going to parallel uh, that in the last days. Where well, God will allow us to do that when uh, eat, eat of uh, the, uh, the the bread of life uh, may be out of order, but when we are hungry, God is merciful and He's going to feed us the bread of life. And God yes. actually spread honey on the ground in the days of Jonathan. Mm. Yeah. Jonathan ate a little bit of honey when his father said, "If you eat, you'll die." There you go. <laughs> you will surely die. And what, God what, what, did, what did the man? The, the man came together in defense of Jonathan because. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's about mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, third paragraph on Sunday. Jesus does not directly answer the question which is asked of him. Instead, he defends the disciples with a multi layered response. He quotes Isaiah, rebuking a nation that honors God in word, but whose heart is far from him. The quotation continues with the condemnation of putting human tradition in the place of divine command. The second part, Jesus plays off of Isaiah, citing the command of God to honor one's parents. That is, to take care of them in the old age. And contrast this with the tradition where one could give something to God, the use of of it for oneself, but to deny an elderly parent in need. Yeah. 
This type of hypocrisy Jesus attacked uncompromisingly. Human tradition has been placed above the word of God. So this starts, at least in, in my opinion, the entering in of the concept of worship into this dynamic, and, and we return to it. Your motivations for what you are doing. If God is not at the center of it, you're not worshiping God, you're serving yourself, or you're serving some other entity, be it the Pharisees or whoever. Ultimately, when you're not serving God, who you're serving, whether it yeah. be the Pharisees or the Pope or not, yeah. who else? Satan. That's right. Um, whether that's your intention or not, it's really, in my mind, irrelevant. Because specifically with worship, Christ is supposed to be at the center of everything you do. Now for the Christian, our entire lives are supposed to be Christ-centered. This morning I'm going to put the emphasis on the worship. Everything that we do in that regard should be focused that way whether it be through study, through song, through prayer, what have you, that's where it should be pointing to. What is the Sabbath supposed to be about? Our relationship to God. So what are we supposed to be thinking about? Yeah, yeah exactly. To, to, put it, to put it in the simplest terms. I'd like, I'd, like, I'd like to throw a wrench in there. I like doing that. Okay. It's true. But... Uh, did, did not the book, did not Acts 17.30 say uh, God winks at our, uh, at our ignor ignorance when we don't know? Mm -hmm. So when when you don't know, that's what, that mercy, is, mercy of God is in play, right? But what happens once you know? What is the requirement? But if you don't try to find out so that you can know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's another yes. problem. Yeah. When when the, all the possibilities are there for you to know, mm -hmm. when all the possibilities are there for you to know and you neglect it to, mm -hmm. to, to take the opportunity to know, yeah. would God wink at your ignorance? No. I think sure. not. No. Uh, Isaiah 511 states this. Uh, um, the word of God will not return void. What that mean? What does that mean? It means God's mercy will yeah. will be perfected in you or what will, will can be held against you when you have the opportunity to know yeah. and you and you neglected it or when you know and you don't do it. Why? What is sin? Sin is knowing mm -hmm. and doing it not. Yeah. That's one. That's the second uh, definition of sin. Sin yeah. is breaking of God's law. Mm -hmm. And the knowing of it, because in Paul clearly says where there is the modern no law age, or no knowledge, we have no the resources. Yes. There's no sin. Where there's no knowledge. We, no we have. That's what. That's why I brought that. That's yeah. why I brought all that. the yeah. reference yeah. material to find out for ourselves what truth is. Mm -hmm. We don't have to go to someone else anymore. There's no intermediary. That's right. We can go directly to God. Through the use of prayer, yeah. we have a direct line. Yes, that's right. We have a that's right. Thank you. That's right. And the prophecy does tell us that the word of God will go to how much of the earth? The whole world. All of it. All the four corners of the earth are going to be. Yeah. Which means the knowledge is there's no there, there won't, nobody's going to be able to be said, use that excuse. Oh, I didn't know. You know what the sad thing is this. Uh, we are also we are we're, we're also told in spirit prophecy that, that uh, some people are going to tell us. Some people are going to tell us. You knew that these things were going to happen. You didn't tell me. So those 
I, 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 uh, I weigh, it's like, the, the scripture tells us that the word of, that it's word is going to go to all four, four corners of the earth. And yet, people are going to say, you knew, you knew that these were important. And you didn't tell me. What if you're too, well, we all have sometimes sins. you're too shy to say anything. Um, I'm not usually, but I have a friend that, I don't know what where she gets her information, but it is so off the wall. And I, I listen, and I think, I need to say something. But when these young people, men, these young fellows have come into our lives, I'm not shy about it. I don't know what the difference is. Well, we all have sins of omission and sins of commission. And sometimes omission. God doesn't, and that's what we doesn't have give to us the words to tell us on a nightly basis. We have to ask the right for forgiveness from God for our sins of omission and our sins of commission. Because we all forget some things or we know something and we don't act upon it. Uh, that's what happens. You can also but ask my, God for okay. for words yeah. to yes. say in a given situation. Okay. Just tell God, I don't know what to say. If right. you want me to say something, you'll have to give it to me. Yeah. I have done that in the past, and it has worked. Yeah, yeah. And right. then I have a friend who says, I, I, I've opened my mouth, and I've stuff that I said it just didn't make any sense. And she said, God makes it so sometimes they will hear what you mean to there say. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. And, that, and look, that's right. My, that's my right. encouragement to do is this. Not, a, not everybody can teach. Not everybody can preach. But everybody can walk the walk. Right? Yeah. So uh, somewhere in the spirit of prophecy, I'm not going to quote it because I don't know how it is, but this, this is the intended purpose of the quote. Um, of, of the quote that was supposed to be in, in the spirit of prophecy. Many are watching, and by what you do, many are going to make decisions. Mm -hmm. you, what it means is, people's attraction to your God will be yeah. through what you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what? You cannot preach, you cannot teach the word, but you can love his love. Yeah. Correct? It's like with Jesus. They watched everything he said and did, and sometimes mm -hmm. you think, if I just go get a bag of ice, it's not going to be a big deal. But then you think, maybe somebody saw you walk in there and wonder, well, we know that they go to church on Saturday. And, and it boils down to the scripture. Yeah. First Corinthians, Corinthians 10, 13. Yeah. No temptation can, can come to you for what is common. But when you are tempted, God is not going to allow you to walk over the store. God is going to, many of this has happened to many of you. Uh, where you're really thinking about helping this person, but you can't. And God somehow just made the back of ice uh, appear. God is that God. God would not uh, allow you to commit, uh, uh, do anything against your, your, your conscience when, you, when your desire is to, to, re, to return, to, to re reciprocate his love for you by being obedient to him. First mm -hmm. Corinthians 10. He knows what you want to do the right thing. He will help you. He reads your mind. For when you are weak, he says, then I am strong, for my strength yeah. is made perfect. And your weakness, that's right. There is nothing that enters a man from the outside which can defile him, but the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. So what did Jesus mean by this? This is on the top of Monday. I think he was uh, about things that you say mm -hmm. more than anything, and because that's the context in the Matthew, mm -hmm. in Matthew 12, that uh, by your words you're going to be judged. Yeah. Um, and your words is what comes out of you. <laughs> I I framed it in in terms of witnessing. What are and again again as Lutner brought up. You're being watched mm -hmm. by those around you yeah. and just living day to day with a certain attitude, with a certain mindset, you can be a witness just in that regard by just living your daily life as you should do without needing to 
be a preacher, a teacher, or any of that. You just live according to the Word of God as best that you can in the world, and that sets an example. And also, in a macro version of it, Jesus told us, told us uh, during the last, when, when you are brought up to the magistrates, don't worry about what you're going to say, because God is going to put inside you what you need to say, say mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's the same, that, and, there's some, and that's a ma macro version. And I know, I know, I know that also it's, 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 it's going to apply in the, in the micro, micro uh, version also. God will put inside you what, mm -hmm. what, what you need to say. Now, there's a must, muscle, muscle to throw in. There's a wrench, right? If you don't take your time doing your Facebook, right? Yeah. We do a lot of Facebooking, right? Or MySpacing, right? Or TikToking. If you don't take your time doing your Facebook, putting your book in the face, where God is not just going to put that, that inside of you. You would have had to do what? Spend your daily. James 4, 7 says what? Submit yourself daily. Why? Because by submitting submitting yourself daily is is that that's how the bread is going to be put in you. Because the knowledge that you have inside the ear is it comes from from you feeding on the daily. What are we supposed to be? We have we have we have been, we have accepted Jesus Christ in the outer court. We've been washed by the blood blood of the Lamb. Where where are we today? We're in the holy place. Right? We are of a holy, peculiar priesthood. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Just a little thing from the Great Controversy, page 597. It is impossible for us, with the Bible within our reach, to honor God by erroneous opinions. That, to me, is, is stunningly clear. Yeah. If the Bible is within our reach, if we decide to do other things other than study the Bible, like you said, our Facebook, get our face in the book, mm -hmm. uh, it's impossible for us to please God with erroneous opinions when we have the Bible available. Mm -hmm. If the Bible's not available, that's a different situation. Mm -hmm. But if the Bible's yeah. available and I'm capable of reading, I'm not blind, uh, you know, uh, then mm -hmm. I cannot honor God with using a faulty opinion of my own. Yeah. When the Bible would correct it. Have you guys heard of this man called Erwin Gain from Australia? I think you have. Who? Erwin Gain. Oh yeah, Erwin okay. Gain, yeah. <clears throat> There's something I learned from him um, at, my, at the beginning of, of, of my walk with Christ. Because the, the beginning of my walk with Christ is really when I became an Adventist. I was more raised Catholic, I've got too many options. But um, my walk with Christ really began when I when I when I became seven Adventist. Really, that um, he, he said he said something that is that is profound to me, and, and I, he says like there may, many we may see many people in the kingdom that was never known the name of Christ because they lived up to to, to the they responded to the voice of their conscience, and I've never found in the Bible because Jesus Christ himself said. It, um, uh, no one can come to the Father except through me. So, um, when everyone um, here put that, that study together, it gave me a lot of hope. Well, you know, in this day and age, when they talk about your truth, your truth, Everybody my has truth, their truth, yeah. You know, what is your truth? Your truth is truth to you, and your truth is to, you know. Yeah. The Bible knows nothing of that. That's right. It does not accept anything yeah. of that idea. Mm -hmm. There's only one truth, one truth, and it is found. The here. truth mm -hmm. is a person. Yeah. yeah. The truth, that person yeah. is Jesus Christ. Who Call said, it dogmatic if you want, right. but that's the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's right. When we come to Father, except to me. That thy word is the truth. Yeah. So we continue with Mark chapter 7. What does contaminate a person or contaminate the soul. Sin. Yeah. Violating the Ten Commandments, essentially. What you say. What you, yeah. What? Yeah. Desires of the heart. Mm -hmm. Self. That 
run contrary to what the Bible says. And um, Mark 7 breaks it down, and it largely uh, pertains to breaking a number of the Ten Commandments. So you started out just talking about worship. So, but how does our discussion plug into worship? It's because of with the way that the Pharisees attested Jesus starting in Mark 7 it's what you value in the things that you do if God is not at the center of what you're doing then you're serving yourself and therefore by extension you're serving Satan because God is not at the focus of what you're doing so in terms of worship when you when you take that path you're blaspheming worship in a sense is not just this it's not big it's not boxed to Sabbath keeping. It's not box to getting together in a box here, singing, learning the, the scriptures. That's only a small portion of worship. The greatest worship is you broadcasting the love of God to the world. So that's where I was going. Yeah. Basically, everything you do, if you're walking with God, is worship. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because but how do you know that you're walking with God unless you find out how? You have to go there first. Yeah. That's right. You gotta go down. First in the morning. Yeah. If you if you if you supplement human rituals yeah. like they were Talmud. doing here, yeah. that's not worship. I mean, how much of the Talmud was wrong? You can you go the Talmud is really a, a, a lot of excerpts from the Old Testament, right? But when they, not really, not really. Oh, much right. of the Talmud was was done much later. And it was developed uh, as they became very hardcore in, in their control <clears throat> over, over the people. Very true, but if you were to read the Talmud, a lot of it you'll find in, in, in the Old Testament. Oh, you might find some yeah. things, but there's, there's not a lot of good things as far as truth to be found in the Talmud. Okay. We, uh, there's God's law, and then there's Talmudic law. So what I'm, what I'm pointing, pointing to is this. <clears throat> Many, many religions out there, Protestants and not, they are very Talmudic. Why? They're taking things out of the out of the Bible and, and, and using it. A lot of that stuff they, they say and do are correct. But it's was it founded completely? No. And if you were to go read the, the the, the, the Talmud, a lot of it you will also find in the scriptures. Now, is there emphasis on, on uh, it, it, is there overemphasis that, that, that which brings burden upon God's people that becomes a curse on them? Because then, because then, then, then what they end up doing is a, is a well did, I said, I spoke a few, that you, that what, what you do? Keeping for yourself commandments of men. What is the most common commandment of men that's, that's kept out there today? Sunday well, keeping. Sunday keeping. What else? Well, all of Talmud, almost all the Talmudic was man's opinion. Mm -hmm. They God's law existed before the Talmud did. Yeah, yeah. But man took and put his own spin. On, on what he wanted God's law to say. Okay. And that is what brought about Talmudic law. Okay, but if it was completely erroneous, obviously, it would not be bought. What's the best way to sell a lie? 
is to hide the mixture it. of truth and error, yeah. Ellen White says, is the most lethal mix. Yeah. It's more lethal than pure error. Such <laughs> such as uh, such is yeah. why it's called what? Babylon. Yeah. yeah. Confusion. Right? Confusion. I guess um, in chapter seven it says how you wash your cups and, and pitchers. I guess I'm not familiar with that, with the Talmudic law. Yeah. Uh, that's that's because Everywhere the, the, the Jewish leaders, authorities, were trying to impose Talmudic law on Jesus and his disciples. And how you Jesus it condemned it every time. He never upheld it even once. And yet, what makes it confusing is because there are truth in that. In Leviticus, there, there's, a, there's a certain rituals in which that, that, are, that they would they demand would Maintain the cleanliness of, of those of those uh, of those cups and, um, and such that were used in in, 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 the, in the sanctuary. And there, there's a re there's a reason behind uh, the, the, the 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 wash basin. They they, they do the rituals, right? The the, the, yeah. the, the, the killing of the animal, and then they, they, they go wash their hands before they enter the most holy place. Yeah, but and that was what, what specifically they, what they for did the priest. What was, was they took certain things that that were applicable uh, for the sanctuary system, and they they over overemphasize apply overemphasis. Or, uh, they, they they add so much to it that it becomes a burden for for the people. That's that's, that's why we, we brought up earlier uh, when line up online, line up online here in the third third level. What what is well, what religion that, that I give an example of, of earlier? The uh, the the remember the the, uh, the religion that plays with snakes mm -hmm. because they took something out of the Bible. Was what they take out? Did, did, was that true? Uh, that that God is going to protect you from, from snakes? Was there something in the Old Testament that that, that, that talk about that? When they look when they looked at the cover snake. When they looked towards it, what they did well, was they took that aspect of the truth and yeah. they twisted and made a lie out of it. Mm -hmm. And they're preaching to yeah. people. Who did the Talmudic law? Who did that? Was it Jewish priests? Yeah, the Jewish yeah. Jewish right. leaders down. Yeah. Uh, so they were the leaders. It wasn't God. I don't no. know. No, 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 it was not. Yeah. God no, submitted no. ten no. commandments mm -hmm. yeah. that we are to abide by. The Talmudic yeah. law has about 400 or a couple hundred of them. Some of them, like you say, and that's true, where is it biblical? Some, no. Well, if they, if they would stay with just Levitical law, that was one thing. But Talmudic law had, expand, had expanded on that with, according to their own ideas. They had taken, muddied the waters. <laughs> Right. So that nobody could keep the law uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, without a huge yeah. burden on them. Uh, yeah. uh, Ellen White has a lot to say about the laws in the Jews' time that it had become so burdensome. Yes. And Jesus, you know, he told the Jewish leaders, "On the outside, you're whited sepulchers, mm -hmm. but in the inside, you are full of corruption, dead men's yeah. bones." Right. And that's with their with their corrupt hearts. They were trying to look perfect with this all this Talmudic law. Mm -hmm. yeah. Christ called it. You look at the white wash sepulchers. Yeah. It means they're clean outside. But what what is it? What, what is inside a sepulcher? Ruddy. Yeah. When you're beholden to tradition, that becomes if it's misappropriated, the, the focus of what you're doing. And if God is not in the center of that, then you've lost the purpose of what you're there for. So with what the Pharisees were screaming about in Mark 7 was not about cleanliness. It was about the ritual. Mm -hmm. So God has effectively been taken out of the equation. They're doing it because that's the order of things as... They thought it would be done, and it had nothing to do with cleanliness. The, mo no. the motive was so, control. Yes. Control. There you go. And, and, yeah. Ultimately, 
who thought? Who was the driving? Who was the driver behind that thought? I drive it for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So Satan, Satan has always sought. Yeah. Satan is yeah. 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 He has always sought. So control. those laws were to serve the Pharisees, and by extension, you're serving Satan because God is no longer at the center of that's that, right. and that's why I, I that's right. tied everything together in that way. And and uh, and it was said too in the Old Testament, well, it was the same deal. As you said, you know, God was out of the uh, thing, out of out of the question. It was when the when David fed the uh, the group uh, showed sure, right. that yeah. wasn't with unwashed hands, although they were very hungry. Uh, yeah, that's it. And it's true that was that was a violation of Way back. the Jewish tradition, the Jewish law, and uh, uh, pertaining to, pertaining to that law. particular um, implement. Mm -hmm. But the, the the thing that m most didn't understand at that time in that situation was that they were under the direct protection of God mm -hmm. because of the persecution from King Saul. So it had been allowed. In in that case, that was that was permitted. Yeah. Not to mention, mention at that point, they was already anointed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as far as David went, he, he was he was anointed. But the rest of yeah. his men were common men. Right. Yeah. All humans are free to choose whom they will have lead their lives, the prince of life or the prince of darkness. Jesus could open deaf ears, but would not force unbelieving hearts to acknowledge his messiahship. This is dealing with um, Mark 7.31. Uh, the deaf and dumb man was healed. That's what Jesus' mission was. For God so loved. He died for everyone. Everyone has the opportunity to choose whom they want to follow. It's not, it's not forced. Everyone has a choice to make. But we can separate ourselves from God. We can. Yeah, we absolutely can. The um, ultimate purpose of the God um, yeah. for love is found in verse 17 behind it. And most people mm -hmm. start at, at 16 for that love. Yeah. Keeps on. But uh, I think, I think uh, when you do it, out of the context with the 17 edition, he came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I think that makes the John 3, 16 more complete. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um. So basically, uh, the rules that, the, what Satan wants is control. Mm -hmm. That's right, well, mm -hmm. that's right. And yeah. what, what you get with Jesus is freedom. Right. That's right. And so Satan's law was flipping that around. Yeah. And, and Satan knows he cannot control through absolute fallacy. So what does he do? Manipulation. He manipulates by how? Yeah. Tossing, um, tossing two things, right? Mm -hmm. And then eventually the lie, if you, if, if you're not what being a, if you're not being uh, watch care, if you're not uh, paying attention, uh, you know, if you're not uh, walking, just a close walk with it daily, right? What's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Walk in the spirit, and you will not satisfy the the, the, the desire of the flesh. Really, is that it, it, if you will not satisfy the lie, the confusion that Satan has purpose for you. 
default, the trap that's set in heaven. So that's where you can fall into. So is there uh, commandments in heaven? The ten. Mm -hmm. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. The ten. The first four commandments. There won't be commandments. Say that again. There won't be commandments. Mm -hmm. Well, still some. I don't know we'll, that we'll all be loving one another. I don't mm -hmm. mind you, God. Okay, but I'm fulfilled with what I have in Jesus Christ. It's true, but then we will have Jesus. Jesus is the law, right? Yeah. What's the, the law? What's the law? Well, that's right. What's the law there before sin? Yes. Why? Because yeah. the law is the character. Of God Himself. So when would the, would God be there? there was, would He Himself be there? He's He is the the uh, what's it called? What's it? What's it, the uh, the term? He's the embodiment of the law. Yeah. Would He Would He always be there? Would He always be love? Yes. What is God? God is love. What is the law of God? The law. Is love. So would we say that the 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 the, uh, the, the law the the ten, ten commandments is going to be there? I don't think so because God, as long as God is there, we have the embodiment of the of love, the law of God. So okay, if God is love, and we're, when we go to heaven, we won't actually see the two stones because no, it's already it, here. Yeah, because I said I will write. I will, I will do a new thing. On flesh I will, I, yeah, I will do a new thing. Yeah. I will write my law in their hearts. Because right. of sin, he had to make caveats. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Yeah. All these things. Mm -hmm. He had to write them so that people, they were visible. But because they weren't in their hearts. Don't so, forget that from, uh, from uh, what you go. We will Our always eternity. have the marks of Jesus Christ in his, in his hand mm -hmm. yeah. for, for eternity. Why? To remind us what the transgression sin. of that law yeah. is. Remind us yeah. sin. Why? So sin, as the Bible says, would never ever oh, rear its ugly head again. Yeah. So, so the commandment of God is it's going to be there. I am sure when we look at Jesus Christ, we can look at the mark yeah. of God in his hands. He's, what's it called? He's in his forehead, his feet. The application may be different. Um, I I don't think that um, you know thou shalt not steal would be a concept in heaven as we understand it now. But don't forget. But so, everything well, still the Sabbath points there? back. Well, Isaiah sixty six. Yeah. Yeah. Will Sabbath be there? From one Sabbath to the next, will me? But it's not a law. It's it's a re it's a celebration. But there was only one law in the beginning. Don't eat of that tree. Yeah. Yeah. And as soon as you ate of that tree, where I, where I, now I want to steal, now I want to kill. Uh, yeah. But if you do away with that and love takes its place, it's a law now that you shouldn't... Uh, have two wives or sleep around. But I love my wife, so there's no law here. That's, there you go. There you go. Where? Yeah, I do the, it because the, I love and, her. And, what is the purpose and, of yeah. the law? It's love. The purpose yeah. of the law is to point out for you the terms, right? The fact that I am yeah. a sinner. That's right. Yeah. You're a sinner. Mm -hmm. And so the purpose of the law, the, the law is like a what? A mirror. So you yeah. can look at the mirror, and then when you see it, that dirt needs to be wiped off. You need to take care of it, right? Yeah. And then, um, so I'm gonna throw a wrench in there about when you went, about what you said about there is no law. There's only one law, right? No. Because if you think about it, when was the dissemination of the Ten Commandments? When did it take place? When was the law of God? There is really only two. Or he was starting to love the Lord with all your heart, with your mind, and soul, and love the neighbor as yourself. Now, when when did those two laws get fragmented? At Moses. At Eden. Yeah. Right. Well, he became ten at, at Sinai. Yeah. Because it's always been 
I mean, the, the Spirit has always been, the Spirit of the Lord has been there, right? Mm-hmm. To love the Lord with all your heart, your mind, your soul, is what the first word. Mm-hmm. And to love the neighbor as you saw the second thing. But Genesis yeah. 26 5 says that Abraham kept my laws and commandments. Thank you. <laughs> and that was before the stones were there. Before the stones were given. What else? Yeah. How did Joseph know not to sit against God with uh, Potiphar's wife? Mm-hmm. That would, that would have been adultery. Because somehow he knew that that part of, that, of his life uh, would, would, have been, would have been belonged to the second part. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your neighbor, you know you can honor your father and mother. If you love your neighbor, you're not gonna uh, steal his wife. If you love your, your neighbor, you, you know you're not gonna uh, uh, steal from him. If you love your neighbor, there's a lot of things that you would not do. And uh, and as you love your neighbor, what you do, you are broadcasting whom you represent. Yeah. Right. Right. So I do uh, say like uh, they'll. There'll be the, there won't be temptation in heaven, and the guarantee is in the hands of Jesus. That's right. Yeah. That's right. The book says it. I believe in that. Says it. Sin is a one-time deal. That's right. Yeah. It's done. And once it's done away with, it's done. No. Well, for you. Yep. First Thessalonians four sixty one. Michael descends. Right. We'll all be changed with a twinkling of an eye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, we, yeah. We will. Becky and I were talking about this mm-hmm. this morning. She. She knows me quite well, and she says, I, I want to meet your mother. And, mm-hmm. and when I get there, well, I got to thinking, you know, my mother died when she was 48. Mm-hmm. If she saw this old man, would she recognize him? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, will, you will be very young. Yeah, very. I'll be as tall as you. (laughs) (laughs) So there'll be distinctions that everybody will be able to recognize us by 